Okay, Nirat sir, go ahead. We are live now. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much Amit. Uh, good evening, good afternoon, good evening, uh, my dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, dear attendees. Thank you so much for joining this again on this Saturday, this afternoon. We are really, really, really very much thankful to you all that you are supporting us since last four or five months in all our regular webinars, training programs, conferences, and uh, you are attending our programs. So we are really very much grateful to you all. Thank you so much. Myself, Neera Jaroda, I am Senior Director at SOHM and take care of uh, SOHM's GEM Green Building Certification Program. Uh, this is the Green Building Certification Program, which is an initiative, green initiative of SOHM. And uh, we have with us uh, very eminent speakers today. And today is uh, a very, very special day for us that we are going to install our eighth GEM chapter in, in the state of Chhattisgarh. So we have a very good team, excellent team, very strong team from Chhattisgarh. This team comprises of very senior architects, MEP designers, consultants, energy, green building, environment consultants, and uh, professors from educational institutions. So this is a very, very special day for us that we are uh, uh, joining, uh, we are starting, we are installing our new chapter in Chhattisgarh. We have a very, very special uh, uh, guest today from uh, Malaysia. She is uh, architect Alice Leong. She is the manager of uh, architect MAA Kuala Lumpur. And uh, she is associated with Arcasia as well. So uh, we are we are honored. We are blessed that she is with us today. And we will be able to listen to her, uh, her uh, special lecture on sustainability, restoration, and conservation. So thank you so much, architect Alice, for joining us. Thank you so much. Uh, I will just take a very brief, uh, do a very brief introduction of our uh, key speakers today, and then uh, I would request uh, uh, Pankaj Dharkarji for his uh, thematic address. We have with us uh, Mr. Pankaj Dharkar, who is the chairman of SOHM Council for Green and Eco-Friendly Movement. We have with us architect Tushar Sogani ji, who is the chairman of GEM Rajasthan chapter and chairman of uh, SOHM's uh, Global Collaboration and State Chapter Committee also. We have with us architect Naveen Sharma, with us so uh, i will not take much of your time now and uh, would request uh, pankaj dharkar ji for his uh, thematic address as mentioned uh, pankaj dharkar ji is the founder chairman of SOHM's council for green and eco friendly movement he is the president of pankaj dharkar associates these are renowned mep and green building consultants and ashray igbc fellow provides innovative and sustainable solutions in the field of building engineering services like heating, ventilation, air conditioning, refrigeration, indoor air quality, fire and life safety, which is a special electrical, lighting, plumbing, IBMS, security, renewable energy, green building certification. During his rich experience of 40 years, successfully designed and coordinated more than 4,000 projects of various applications, such as healthcare, pharmaceutical, education institutions, hotel, restaurant, offices, malls, software and biotech parks, data centers, diamond processing units, commercial and residential high-rises, towers, banks, auditoriums, studios. He is the national chair of FSA Suraksha Index. Uh, as mentioned, he is the current chairman of national chairman SM GEM Council. He is the past president of Fire and Security Association of India, ISHRE as well. He is the past international president of FSA also. So, Dharkar Saab, uh, we would like to listen from you about SM GEM Green Building Certification Program and would like to listen a very energetic message from you once again. Over to you, sir. Unmute, sir. Unmute yourself, sir. Yes, sir. Unmute, sir. Unmute, Kijay, sir. एक बार क्लिक कीजिए सर बस अनम्यूट कीजिए सर जी हां सर बोलिए कैन यू सी द स्क्रीन अभी नहीं सर एक अभी ठीक है सर अब आ रही है सर यस यस 
Yes, sir. Perfect. Good afternoon to all of you and uh, good evening to Alice. Uh, uh, thank you, Tusharji, once again to you for connecting us to Navinji and entire his team. Fantastic work by him and uh, my special thanks to him to also connecting to Alice. So we are all going to have a wonderful presentation uh, uh, in this session today. So friends, uh, to whom who are joining for the first time, uh, uh, a little bit about Ashocham. Ashocham is working towards creating conducive environment of India business to compete globally. We have 400 chambers, uh, 4.5 lakhs members working through various chambers of commerce uh, across the country since 1920. Currently, we are headed by Dr. Niranjan Hiranandani, who is an eminent personality in build environment from Mumbai. Uh, Vinit Agarwal is our vice president. Gold Balkrishna Goenga is our immediate past president. And Deepak Sudji is secretary general, who has been supporting our endeavors through Mr. Niraj and Amit. Uh, both of them are here. Uh, friends, Ashucham has taken a green initiative to take care of Mother Earth and complement India's sustainability movement and have formed Council of Green and Eco-Friendly Movement. We call it uh, CGEM. Uh, friends, uh, the GEM certification program is very transparent, very simple. Uh, uh, and we believe that any architect or um, engineering background person can immediately pick it up. Uh, Currently, we have a second uh, reference guide, second edition. You can download this, is free download available. Uh, the whole certification program is based out of uh, ECBC 2017 and NBC 2016. And we at CJM believe that these are the two beautiful documents which Indian engineers and architects have given to the globe. Uh, the program is completely uh, based and includes sustainability, energy, water efficiency, more green areas, indoor air quality, daylight, fresh air and human comfort. Uh, it also captures fire and life safety. To us, this is one of the unique programs uh, which believes that uh, the building have to be energy efficient, uh, should have good fresh air and um, good quality air, but also be uh, from life and fire safety point of view, completely secured. Uh, of course, on the fresh air and uh, air quality, a lot of revision uh, is due, overdue post pandemic. Uh, we, we really want to uh, create that awareness in terms of infection free environment and which is, uh, which is about to get added. Uh, our certification program is based on JM1 to JM5, JM1 from 40 to 49 point to JM5 going beyond, excelling beyond 105. Uh, and we are constantly updating it. Uh, currently, the certification program covers housing, urban development, uh, residential, commercial, hotels, offices to universities, factories, and uh, very shortly we'll be adding healthcare. Uh, and also, the, our cities are seeing a lot of uh, e-commerce activity, and with that, a lot of warehousing is coming up uh, across the country. So, warehousing is one area which we are adding very shortly, and also. How do we upgrade the current stock of building, which is non-efficient? So uh, a very unique program was conducted by us with a BE chief uh, and also World Bank. And this is an area where we would like to come up with new certification program where current non-efficient buildings, which have poor envelope and poor technologies can be upgraded. Uh, friends, our program is very affordable. Uh, uh, it addresses uh, fire and safety, as I said earlier. And also, it's a great recognition to the building. And we do believe very strongly that uh, our certified buildings will definitely give a payback of three to four years. Um, and we all know that the buildings are built for more than 50 years. So I think we, we really want to promote the awareness where each building constructed in future has to be a green building. Uh, friends, this is a first uh, Another important aspect of our certification program, we are not only giving certificate, but also monitoring the energy level, the water level and indoor air quality on our certified projects. We are also give this at a very reasonable cost, uh, which, which is just uh, 1000 rupees uh, to Alice. This cost will be 
less than 30 dollars uh, us dollars uh, at 30 us dollar per month we are able to monitor uh, through a cloud based system the energy consum consumption of the building we certify the water consumption uh, we certify and the indoor air quality and whole idea is to create a data in india we lack uh, in creating the benchmarking for our future generation and we will like that the data collected for our buildings or other buildings is used for the research uh, pro projects is used for the future um, new pro pro projects which can really enhance the quality of buildings which are coming up in our country uh, currently we have very important mous in fact only two days back we signed up with the indian institute of architects but we have also a mou with uh, um, fsai ishre isle fs uh, gacs which deals with the main you know, facility management the smart habitat for foundation deals with the um, center of excellence for arts and architecture indoor air quality association of usa the us chapters of american society of heating refrigerating engineers uh, so all this put together we have been jointly doing numerous program i'm very glad to uh, share with you that current recently in last week uh, gem is also uh, listed by cresil this is a big development for us we, you can see here with igbc usgbc age uh, gem certification program is also uh, listed and we are really indeed proud of this uh, the certificate uh, is a, a very interesting certificate, which is uh, proudly put by our clients in their main lobbies of reception or director's cabin. Um, and currently we have projects which are in pharmaceutical sectors like Abbott, the cement plant like JK, electrical and electronics giant like Siemens. And you can see here um, quality hotels of Hilton, uh, ITCs, and several university across the country in last one year we have done several programs uh, earlier they used to be physical programs starting from installation of of a jaipur chapter uh, rajasthan chapter punjab chapter gujarat chapter which happened physically thereafter we have moved to digital world uh, from uh, march onwards and you can see here we started with up chapter then we're going to west bengal to uh, karnataka to maharashtra uh, uh, 19th of September and today we are here in Chhattisgarh and this is an extremely proud moment for us with such a big team. Um, I'm really honored with the international speaker coming. Thanks to Sharji again uh, for this day. Uh, we have an interesting team. We'll talk about it a uh, little later. But thanks to Navinji for selecting such eminent personality from across the section, cross section of build environment. Uh, several eminent architects, uh, people from solar field, uh, uh, renewable energy, MEP field. So thanks to you, sir. I think you have selected fantastic people and I'm really glad to see such dynamic teams. Friends, uh, we are going across the country and you can see here the greens, we are, we are already there and I will leave it to Mr. Tushar to tell us about our future plan. But Recently, in uh, COVID time, we have done some important programs, and I'm very proud of these two, which I like to mention here. One was the guidelines, uh, which which was the first of its kind in the globe, uh, where we brought along all the engineering societies like ISHRE, FSAI, EMA, IPA, and GACS. Along with this, we created these guidelines in globe. It had never happened that the projects got stalled suddenly. Uh, the uh, buildings which were in use got stalled suddenly and they had to restart so a lot of can, can, lot of uh, precautions have to be taken when you restart such large projects or large factories so these guidelines were went to 29 states and six union territories and government has really appreciated uh, i was speaking about how do we bring uh, the current buildings to the green fold and uh, this is a program which we do did with the World Bank and BE, and uh, we are again going to do a number of uh, for future programs with BE to create awareness. How does the current buildings, uh, without spending money by owners, can be with the help of performance contracting, uh, can be made green, and how do we uh, make them energy efficient? So this is a this is an area which can create 
huge amount of uh, business in the country. Uh, people who are in the build industry of various segments, they can get the business because here again, the owners will not have to put upfront money. And what they get is a completely green technologies, newly technologies. Yes, uh, we did several digital programs, a uh, number of them, uh, and also game certificate fight. In fact, today morning only, uh, this, uh, we did a program where more than 400 uh, young people participated. Uh, currently, we have 740 plus certified uh, professional. And I will urge all of you who are uh, in today's program uh, to take advantage of this. Uh, in this digital era, there are special prizes happening, and this will uh, indeed bring you closer to Jen. That's what we believe. Uh, friends, uh, we have 100 plus uh, the, the target of 100 universities uh, to sign, come up with the uh, gem, and we have already completed 40 universities where uh, the program is being taught, and uh, we have a dynamic leader, uh, Jay Gurksab, and entire his team. Uh, every week we are signing five MOUs um, uh, across the country. So, friends, in this digital time, uh, I'm very proud that we have reached uh, uh, 40 universities. We did 45 plus webinars uh, with 65,000 registrations, 45,000 people attended with eight chapter today. I think we are headed towards a very brilliant start. We have taken full advantage of this COVID situation and I'm really thankful to entire dynamic team uh, which is supporting us across the country. Uh, friends, the year started with a centenary celebration of SOCHAM completing 100 years which was blessed by our Prime Minister, Mr. Modi himself, with several cabinet ministers, eight of them attending this program and, uh, and showing their trust with ASHOCHAM. And friends, uh, we, we just we do believe that and let us take a place together to create a green and environmental sustainable country uh, with our Prime Minister. And once again, thanks to entire team of Chhattisgarh uh, thanks, special thanks to Tusharji, uh, special thanks to Alice who has uh, come all the way today to us on digital platform from Malaysia. So thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Darkar Saab. Thank you so much uh, for uh, a very encouraging and energetic message, sir. It is always a pleasure to listen to you. Thank you so much. Uh, now, uh, I would like to invite uh, architect Tushar Sogani ji. First of all, uh, Tushar Sogani ji, I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to you that uh, with your support, uh, we are now installing today eighth chapter. Thank you so much, Tushar ji. Tushar ji is the chairman of SOCM Gem Rajasthan chapter. He is the principal architect and managing director of TSDPL Jaipur. Tushar Sogani ji has completed uh, graduation in architecture from Malwiya Regional Engineering College which is MNIT now in the year 1999. He is the principal architect and managing director of TSDPL Jaipur with currently more than 50 million square feet of area pro under progress at numerous sites. He continues to offer design consultancy to several major developers, builders, institutes, hoteliers, and other key real estate players across the country. As mentioned, he is the chairman of GEM Rajasthan chapter. He is the vice chairman of Indian Institute of Architects Rajasthan chapter and Deputy Chairman of Arcasia Committee on Green and Sustainable Architecture, ACG GSA, Arcasia, highlighting the vernacular sustainable and green rating practices in Indian architecture. He is also a member of uh, Fire and Safety Association of India also. So uh, welcome to Sharji for your special address. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you so very much. Am I audible? <clears throat> yes, sir. Yes. yes. First of all, a very uh, good afternoon to Chairman uh, Mr. Pankaj Dhargar. Uh, the newly team, which is going to be inducted very shortly, you know, the dynamic team under the leadership of architect uh, Naveen Sharma from Chhattisgarh, uh, uh, architect Raj Prajapati, who is going to be co-chairman, uh, and, and we have got a lot of other dynamic people who are going to support this entire team. So, and, it, and last, I would really like to thank uh, architect Ellis, who has been my always a very near and dear friend in Arcasia. And thanks to you, Ellis, at such a short notice, you accepted our proposal and the entire GEM team is honored by your virtual presence here. Thank you so very much, Ellis. 
friends, you know, when uh, Mr. Dhakar uh, gave me the task of uh, spreading our wings to the various part of India and of course to some international domains also. You know, uh, it was a very tough task for me, but with his uh, motivation, with his, you know, uh, his, his model booster, you know, uh, uh, today we have reached up to this uh, uh, position that we have already installed, as he told, seven chapters in India. And today we are going to uh, induct the eighth chapter in the country, that is the Chhattisgarh chapter. And uh, he has given me a task of spreading uh, our wings uh, within the Indian states that I have to achieve a figure of uh, 20 by uh, November 2020 and at least two or three international chapters. Sir, I assure you once again, sir, the way in which I'm getting support from you and getting the free end from you, I think I'll be able to meet my target which have been assigned to me, sir. Thank you, sir. And just uh, to give a, a brief uh, 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 a line of action, which we are targeting in next coming months and next coming days. Sir, ninth chapter, uh, which will come to us as Orissa and architect Devoto Sahu has played a very vital role in forming the team. And I think in a day or two, sir, we'll be definitely coming up with a date when we'll be uh, uh, launching the Orissa chapter, sir. So this is going to be the ninth chapter, sir. And today I got one very good news from Kerala also that we got a leadership from Kerala and uh, under whose able leadership we are going to form a Kerala chapter and this is going to be a 10th chapter, sir. So 11th chapter we are targeting to Tamil Nadu, sir, and 12th chapter, which again architect Devutu Sahu is uh, coordinating, that is for Northeast chapter. So, sir, I think by uh, 15th of October we'll have at least 12 chapters in place, sir. This is what I'm looking for. And talking to the other part of the world also, our nearby countries, you know, South countries, and I think very soon we'll be able to come up with uh, 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 concrete chapters in all these uh, countries. Uh, and uh, Alice, I like to just draw your attention, you know, the way in which, because we, uh, the way in which our president, our chairman is taking to jam, you know, to the entire country, entire subcontinent, you know, you will really find it remarkable. I think you must be hearing a lot from me always about JEM in the last so many years. So JEM actually has really um, uh, got many feathers to its cap, to its cap, you know, wherein we are one of the fastest growing rating uh, tool agency in the country. And uh, in the times to come, uh, we'll be soon recognized by almost all the developing authorities. We are working hard upon it. And um, our slow motor is that basically we want to have a green and eco-friendly movement. The gem itself suggests the punchline uh, is green and eco-friendly movement. And I just as already the chairman has given a lot of uh, programs which we have been doing, but we basically intend to target at the budding professionals, which comprise of budding architects, budding engineers, and budding green professionals, so that we can cultivate a feeling of green you know, uh, movement amongst them and finally when they turn into the profession so that they can uh, take this entire green and sustainable um, parameters to a greater height. So this is what our intention is. We actually believe in awareness and this. And uh, I would really like to thank architect Naveen Sharma who has done a fantastic job, you know. We used to interact a lot, me, uh, Pankaj sir, Neeraj, Always and finally, the dream comes true when we are having such a fantastic team from Chhattisgarh. And I'm proud to see that there are a few females also in the uh, committee that is going to add, you know, really, I think you guys should work hard with your chapter chairman, uh, especially Aditi as a secretary, you know. So uh, I think time has come when again Chhattisgarh will be actually, you know, showing us a very good work in green and sustainable architecture. And um, we are we are looking uh, way forward from you, Naveen. That uh, in times to come, you will go for a lot of a uh, lot of creative and innovative programs, uh, which is going to spread the overall philosophy of Gen. So I think I should not waste my time because today again is a historic day for us. So let me invite Mr. Pankaj Dharkar, our chairman, to install the Chhattisgarh chapter officially. So over to you, Pankaj ji. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tusharji, for those wonderful words and inspiring uh, 
our Chhattisgarh team. So may I now invite uh, architect Navin Sharma ji. Sharma ji, you have to um, raise your right hand and uh, if you agree to what I am saying, uh, you must endorse it so that I can install you uh, yes. as chair. So um, uh, architect uh, Navin Sharma ji, the general leadership of Jain Chhattisgarh state chapter is interested to you. You will act as chairman of Jain Chhattisgarh state chapter and be part of all committees of this. You will give direction and leadership to all areas of chapter activity. As chapter chairperson, it will be your responsibility to ensure that policies and directives of society and your chapters are carried out. Above all, you are the one whom the members of this chapter can and will direct their criticism of policies and activities and you must render them satisfaction to them all. The privilege of this service carries with it great honor, a real responsibility and a lot of hard work. Do you, Mr. Architect Navin Sharma ji, promise to fulfill the duties and responsibilities of your chapter as specified? Yes, I do. Thank you, sir. Duties well and wish you much success and happiness in terms of your uh, office. I'm really uh, pleased on behalf of members of Association Jain Green Building Council to install you as chairman of Jain Chhattisgarh State Chapter. Yes, Congratulations, sir. To you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I shall now present. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, and congratulations you. to you. I shall now present you other officers and members of working committee. So next, I would like to uh, install our co-chairman, architect Raj Pratap Prajapati ji. So Raj ji, uh, you will have to raise your right hand. Right, sir. Uh, architect uh, Raj Prajapati ji, as co-chairman, you will act uh, at all times. Be prepared to assume his uh, his duty in case the ch chairperson is unavailably not available to attend chapter meeting, board meeting, and as such other duties as may be delegated to you. Uh, do you, Architect Raj Prajapati ji, promise to fulfill the duties and responsibilities of your chapter as specified? Yes, sir. It is my pleasure to install you as co-chairman of Jain Chhattisgarh State Chapter. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to install a dynamic uh, secretary whom I know for a long time from my Ishre, Ashre and uh, my profession, MEP consultant, uh, Ms. Aditi Patel. Aditi, it will be your responsibility. Aditi, can you raise your right hand? Yes. Aditi, it will be your responsibility to keep due records of meeting, attend correspondence and be aid to senior officers. Do you, Aditi, promise to fulfill the duties and responsibilities of your chapter as specified? I do, sir, with my 100% energy. Thank you. Thank you, Aditi, for those nice words. It is my pleasure to install you as Secretary of James Chhattisgarh Chapter. Congratulations to you, Thank Aditi. You. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, next, Neeraj ji. Neeraj ji uh, uh, is taking care of uh, finance and accounts. So, Neeraj ji, it will be your duty to receive money, pay all authorized accounts, and give accounting financially whenever it is called upon. Do you, Neeraj uh, promise to fulfill duties and responsibilities of your as, uh, office as specified? Yes, sir. Yes. Neeraj, Thank you, sir. Neeraj I am uh, glad to install you as treasurer of uh, Jain Chhattisgarh chapter. Next, uh, I will take uh, architect Saurabh Kartumwar, uh, Saurabh Ji. Uh, Architect Saurabh ji, it will be your uh, duty yeah. to design the programs and execute them with the support of all members of chapter. You may seek the association and support of other organizations to execute the programs with prior approvals and guidance of chairman and co-chairman of the chapter. Do you, Architect Saurabh, promise to fulfill the duties and responsibilities of your office as specified? Yes, definitely will do, sir. Hello. Yeah, definitely will do. You as a program chair for Jain Chhattisgarh State Chapter. Congratulations thank, to you, sir. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Next, uh, Mr. Amit Kumar Sharma ji, uh, you will be 
uh, our marketing chair um, so I mean, Jay, it will be your uh, responsibility uh, uh, to take care of marketing of gem programs event conferences webinars amongst all the related networks social media platforms and others as applicable you will ensure that the visibility of program must increase and you will completely support our program chair and chairman and co-chairman of the chapter to mr amit kumar ji promised to fulfill the duties and responsibilities of all office uh, as office specified so sir amit ji it is uh, i'm very glad to install you as marketing chair uh, finally let us uh, install the cwc members uh, can i request all of you to raise uh, put your uh, mobile cameras uh, your cameras on and also raise your right hand so i am taking the names uh, mr neeraj paliwal as advisor vijay nathani as advisor professor architect vidya singh as advisor architect uh, nina raicha executive member mr nishan bafna executive member architect professor mustafa ahmed executive member architect atul deshpande executive member uh, mr jain jain executive member architect ravi chauhan uh, executive member architect vijay hirwani executive member architect vijay krishnan executive member so because all of you have demonstrated interest and and chapter affairs you have selected to, to represent them in chapter working committee it will be your individual responsibility to meet as committee it is an honor and privilege to serve on it and it is my pleasure to welcome you all to this activity of society and to install you as members of chapters working committee of jm chatisgarh chapter so good luck to you and congratulations to all of you thank you uh, so my fellow members of jm chatisgarh state chapter these are your duly elected officers and committee members they deserve your continued support and guidance Congratulations to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, Darker Sahab. Uh, thank you so much for installing the new Jam Chhattisgarh chapter. And uh, congratulations to uh, Navin Sharma ji and entire Jam uh, Chhattisgarh chapter team. Uh, you know, for the for the new chapter. Now uh, I would request uh, architect Navin Sharma ji. new chairman of uh, jam chatisgarh chapter for a special address before this uh, architect navin kumar ji is the principal architect of navin sharma and associates he has completed his degree in architecture in the year 1995 and it is masters in urban planning in 2020 he is an academician also he has been teaching in the government engineering college raipur for more than 8 years and started his practice at raipur chatisgarh He is rendering his services in and around Chhattisgarh state. He has been awarded several times of several times by then Chief Minister of State for his excellence in design. He is the active member of various professional bodies like IIA, IIID, IPA, IBC, and IOV. At present, he is the chairman of IIA Chhattisgarh chapter, and he involves himself with the various social organizations also. He is an active member of Rotary Club since 1999. So Navin ji, over to you. We would like to listen, listen to you on this. Thank you, Neeraj ji. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, respected Pankaj Dharkar ji, Chairman SHM Council for Jam, Neeraj Arora ji, Amit Sharma ji, Rajni Shagrawal ji. Uh, today's keynote speaker, Architect Alice Leon. architect tusar sogani ji chairman rajasthan chapter architect leena kumar chairman karnataka chapter architect devato sahu ji chairman west bengal chapter architect vilas aucha chairman maharashtra chapter architect surender baba chairman punjab chapter architect anupam mittal up chapter chairman architect anand tatu ji from gujarat chapter chairman all the sochain council members for jam members from chatisgarh 
and other places and dear attendees on behalf of my team i welcome all of you on this virtual installation ceremony of our chatisgarh chapter first of all i would like to thank our national chairman pankaj dharkar for giving me opportunity to serve as chairman of the sohm jam chatisgarh chapter thank you so much sir for showing faith in me i will try my level best to take this chapter to reach new heights is most of the members of the chapters are connected with the construction industry we all know the construction activity generates a lot of pollution which not only affects living organisms but also adversely affect the environment and our natural ecosystem pollution from the construction industry generates dust noise and construction and demolition waste means high level carbon emission footprint which how uh, which somehow pollutes air water and environment now it's time to prepare action plan to control population pollution generated by the industry and i am grateful to sohm jam to provide us an opportunity to reduce reuse and recycle of construction and demolition waste which will certainly reduce the burden on natural renewable resources keeping this concern in mind and hoping to grasp this opportunity press maximum to inculcate more sustainable practice sustainable practice in our field i have tried to keep a balanced team incorporating people from different sectors working in the field of green architecture to achieve this we have with us engineer vijay nathani ji he is with us as he has a vast experience of working as builder and he is a past chairman of credai chatisgarh also we have with us mr neeraj paliwal from skyler who promotes and deals in sustainable and reusable material of openings and buildings in chatisgarh yes mr aditi patel is working as met consultants since a long time mr nishan bafna is with us from tarasans who deals in execution of fire safety and fire fighting products in and around chatisgarh mr jain jain from sankeshwar energies who is promoting solar energy and helping in reduction of electrical powers definitely we have with us architect neena raicha is a gem certified professional with academic and professional background she will definitely help us a lot we have with us two professors architect vidya singh from amity university and architect mustafa from it ham university both are here to connect us to respect active universities for mou and involve the young bloods for future activities and sir most important thing i have chosen the gem of iia chatisgarh chapter for sohm gem chatisgarh chapter yes they are architect raj prajapati architect saurabh hadgaonkar architect atul desh pande and architect ravi chauhan all of them are very experienced and passionate to render their services for the society architect vijay hirwani and architect vijay krishnani are very sincere and committed committed professionals i am sure with this tremendous team we will be able to aware the green building practice in our state to make it clean green and more habitable thank you thank you so much thank you sir neera sir over to you ji uh, thank you namin ji thank you uh, for this wonderful message and yes you are you are absolutely right sir you have uh, selected gem for uh, for the gem program gem of chatisgarh thank you so much thank you so much now the time has come uh, when uh, we should invite our uh, special guest special guest from uh, malaysia she is the keynote speaker for the day she is architect alice leong 
and uh, manager of uh, architect MAA Malaysia. So uh, she's graduated from uh, University Science of Malaysia with double degrees, Bachelor of Science, HBP in architecture and Bachelor of Architecture. That's great. She is currently a manager and uh, a practicing architect for 16 years at Architect MAA. She is a professional architect and a qualified uh, GBI facilitator in Malaysia. Currently, she is the GBI accredited panel and technical committee of uh, GBI. She is the honorary treasurer of uh, Malaysia Institute of Architects, which is PAM. She is also the former honorary secretary of Malaysia Green Building Council and uh, former GBI's board of director. She is the representative and committee member of uh, Architects Regional Council Asia, Arcasia, Green and Sustainable Architecture Committee, and Zone B representative. She is appointed by International Unions of Architects as SDG Commission Committee of Region 4. She has obtained as accredited building inspector qualification with PAM Architect Center and qualified herself as arbitrator under PAM panel list in 2019. She is actively involved in many various projects where green and sustainability elements are mostly implemented in the design and living spaces of the projects. She has experiences in various types of buildings such as housing, high rising, commercial offices, hotel, institutions, transportation hub, mixed development, etc. She has been invited by various universities and institutions, national and international, such as China, India, etc., as a speaker, judges for many competitions, as well as external panel critics for university student works. So uh, welcome, Architect Ellis. Uh, I can see uh, in your profile that you have wonderful experience of uh, sustainability and green buildings. And because GEM is a green building certification program, so we would like to listen from you with your experience that how we can uh, progress this program, how can we move forward? Over to you, Alice, for your session. Thank you. Thank you, Misha. Um, I think let me share the, throughout the screen first. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, before I start it, I would like to thanks again to the chairman, Mr. Prakash uh, Dakar from the uh, Association Chem. And uh, of course, uh, thank you to Architect Tusha Sogani who invited me to this uh, very meaningful uh, digital platform where you have your eight chapters for GEM has been set up. And congratulations to Architect Navin Sharma and the rest of your council member as well as the committee. And I'm very impressed by uh, Asocham has been doing so much uh, and, and is really moving very fast. Uh, so, um, well, anyway, like architect Tusha said that when he uh, call, uh, asking me whether I can be the this uh, very uh, meaningful platform to be the speakers, uh, even in a very short um, uh, notice, but thinking that, um, well, it, it's good to to be here to again to share some of my uh, experiences and uh, other things has been happened around in my country. So that is uh, sharing the idea as well as uh, knowledge and skill as well. Um, I was thinking that what sort of topics I could share, but uh, I've, I've been to India uh, Jaipur twice uh, before the pandemics and I found that uh, India is very rich of all the uh, heritage buildings and all the histories are all fantastic. So I hope that after the end of this pandemic, I have more chance to visit to other parts of the, uh, India to have an eye opening for myself. So today, uh, my topics are basically is going to focus uh, in uh, what happens in my country. So since that Tusha has been shared many things in Acacia platforms about the uh, historicals and heritage of India. So I was thinking that perhaps I should share a little bit about what has been uh, our, our heritage in, 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 in Malaysia. So uh, for the um, everyone that in India that haven't been to Malaysia, so this is the time that I can introduce a little bit about uh, what we are, what has been affected in uh, our country. So I'm going to cover a few uh, items in this topic today. It's about the challenges, experience, and the collaboration in sustainable of how the restoration and con uh, conservation for the heritage building. So today basically is focusing on the sustainable for the heritage building. Uh, since uh, Mr. Uh, Niraj has been introduced me, 
Um, I'm thinking that I'm going to stick, skip this, but uh, basically that uh, this is my office and you can see we have a group of big uh, partners all around. We have the directors, we have the associates and the managers and our office is uh, located in the centers of the cities of Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. So yeah, and our company is named Architect MAA, Sundaram Bahart. Yeah. So okay, let's move on to the histories and experiences. Um, for people which uh, they don't uh, have uh, really familiar about what has been going for Malaysia. So a very rough and brief history is about that. Uh, well, in third and to 15th centuries that the influences of the Hinduism and Buddhism are quite strong so at that time of moment come from India as well as from China to the uh, at that time we call it a Malaya Peninsula as you can see on the screens over there. So then after that, it uh, replaced slowly in between uh, from the 7th to 13th centuries that the uh, other uh, influences from the other uh, religions like the uh, Muslims that then uh, slowly uh, also come to this uh, so-called our peninsula uh, Malaya. So come to 16th centuries, then you can see the first uh, uh, very first European colony has been arrived, which is the Portuguese. So they have uh, capturing the most important area, which is Malacca Straits, where they can conquer. It's a very important straits that all at that time, the ancients, that a lot of uh, shipments and businessmen, they'll definitely pass through the straits because the only uh, transportation they can cross internationally is by the ships. So this is a very important one of the port. So Portuguese has been uh, capturing this particular uh, spots. And after that, uh, it was uh, followed by the Dutch in around uh, uh, in 1641 at the time. But for a while later, around in the 18th centuries, that the British has come over and they took over. But British has been not just occupying uh, in Malacca by itself, but they also took over the Singapore, the Penang, as well as some of the part of our so-called the uh, East Malaysia, which is now we call it the Sabah and Sarawak. Now the naming of that. So, but uh, followed by that in the World War Two, uh, Japanese has been also slowly uh, conquering most of the area in Southeast Asia, including uh, Malaysia. So when they come over and the British has, uh, you know, they 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 just back, uh, back off their teams. But it was just for a short while from 1941 until 1945. Then. Uh, upon the surrenders of the Japanese and the British come over uh, to uh, administrate back what they have been left before that. So in the year of 1957, which is also our very important years, and uh, that is on the August of 31st, that uh, we, a group of uh, Malaysians that uh, already uh, went to uh, England to talk about it and negotiate to uh, request for the independence. So that's how we get it independence. At that time, we name it as a Malaya. That is exclude the Singapore as well as the Sabah and Sarawak, which is uh, the East Malaysia that I mentioned. And followed by that in year uh, 1963, that is the formations of the names of Malaysia that's come about that include the Singapore as well as Sabah and Sarawak at that time. So that's basically the brief story about that. And you can see some of the pictures that this is how the old Malacca Empire at that time, it was really a very busy port and a township that um, all business uh, people from all around the international, they will come around doing different business. That's how this is the place that people start to exchange the culture, exchange the uh, different languages and certain languages has been formed by that. So that's why sometimes nowadays that in Malaysia, uh, our national, our language, uh, the Malay has been captured from each of the uh, uh, peoples from other uh, country, including people from India, because we're businessmen from India. So that's why we adapt some of the words like uh, roti and all this thing has been captured in the language. So that's how the influence come about. And uh, beside the Malaccas, there's the other uh, ports, which is quite important, which is the Penang, which is the Penang Island, uh, where I'm graduate from the Penang Island. This is the old Penang, you can see. It's also uh, an island that uh, further up to the north side. Um, a lot of things happen. The, the, the ships also will be stopping about that uh, at that port. And after that is old Borneo. 
Um, nowadays, people still call it Borneo, but they don't no longer call it an old Borneo. Borneo also stands for the East Malaysia, where it's include all the Sabah and Sarawak. So these are the very uh, few uh, places that which are always occupying with people uh, from all around the world at that time. So a little bit about the heritage and diversity like experience. So uh, we, um, we know that in all around the countries that people will build uh, various types of buildings according to a lot of things. So I, I put it out, I think on the right side, I wouldn't explain much about that because I just uh, roughly brief about how, the, uh, how it come to the modern uh, era. I want to talk about on the re uh, regionalism, which uh, anybody's either is come from uh, um, people out from the Malaysia at that time. When they come to build up a building, when they settle down in Malaysia, so they started to look into the items and how to build a buildings that for living to suit. So the things that have to consider is about the local context and also the customs of the making of building in a particular region. It has to rely on a specific knowledge. It depends on what uh, races are you and what uh, uh, regions and uh, your cultures are you are from. So everybody's from different country that were subside and settled down in each part of the Malaysia and they started to build uh, their own living building. So they, they were based on all the skills, whatever they have inherited from their origin country. So they also have to, at the same time, they also have to look at the local climate. So Malaysia, our climate is about almost 365 days summers and with rains, uh, monsoon season. So now we are actually in the monsoon season. Um, the first part and the other half will be at the end of the year. So again, we have to look into the geology, the geography, the topography. Again, I mentioned about the cultures and other other um, issues such as the political structures, the family dynamics, as well as the social organization. Because it's very unique. Everybody come from different types of the area and they settle down. And these are the things that will take into the consideration before they build for the building. So start from that, we know that Malaysia is a multi-culture and we have a multi-racist people. So the majority, we have a Malay, we have Chinese, we have India, and, and, and then we have uh, the native uh, here, as well as many others. But of course, the, the few majorities are what I have been mentioned about here. So Malay tradition house, you can see it uh, on the screen. It was actually made from uh, a local tradesman. Also, we call it an architecture without an architect. At that time, there's no architect. So everything was built by the people who come all around and with the knowledge and based on uh, their home country, their origin country, that how they're going to build it around here. So they will actually look at the local situation and what sort of material that you can get and also the local uh, climates and your all surroundings like I uh, mentioned uh, previously. So to inherit the green and sustainable design principle is such as using the local material. So they had to design at the time, you definitely have to rely 100% of passive system because they were impossible to have this A conditionings and all these things. So almost I can say is about 99.9% .9 or maybe 100% everything will be designed based on the passive systems for heating and cooling the building, specifically for the climate. So these are the uh, some of the examples that you can see all the Malaysia's houses. They each of them have the different uh, design. It depends again because um, you know, like 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 India, you uh, India is a big country, and each of your region you have different cultures, different language, uh, slightly different of the uh, accent for your uh, languages and all those things. The same for Malaysia as well, even though it's come from the Malay uh, community. And they have different culture because some of them, they are at ancient time, they are coming from uh, part of uh, Aceh from uh, in Indonesia, they come from the Sulawesi, they come from uh, Sumatra and etc. etc. from most of the regions around and they cross over, as I said, they make the do business and they settle down in each part of different part of the Malaysia. So each of the state, you can see the uniqueness of the uh, Malay traditional houses, some with the very sharp uh, roof edges, some with different design and some with a more uh, longer uh, longer in shape and all these things. So these are all influenced by their own uh, local different culture and they brought over here and synchronize as well with the uh, Malaysia uh, local context. So 
this is um, a little bit more to explain on that. So on the plan, you can see this is how basically it's not a standard, but it's the concept about how Malay tradition houses design was built at that time. So you can see that uh, they have uh, it, the sequence is, must be there in such a way. So in, in, in this portion, they call it Anjong or call it a Sarambi. In, in another word, that is the way that uh, on this plan, you can see that your guests coming over, then uh, you can actually, uh, you know, a place for, uh, I will say, a casual, a casual hang, uh, hang up. So people, they just sit around just to chit chat for a while, or maybe for families, um, you know, when weather is too hot, they can actually always uh, just put up a carpet in front of this um, fully ventilated uh, area. That, that this word is called Sarambi. Maybe in English we can call it a veranda or terrace, as you name it. And the moment when you in, enter into the house, then you will separate into different sessions. You call it a Roma Ibu. That is a place that uh, now I interpret into the modern term is called a living area. So that is the area that you serve your guests. You keep your guests to sit down. You want to have a more appropriate uh, way to treat your extreme guests and all those things. That's how you to uh, conduct your activities around here. So followed by that, you have a second uh, areas, which is also the same uh, confined into the same area with the living. They call it a guest reception area, or in another way, they call it rumatana, means the middle of the house. It's also the same thing for the guests if you have a numbers more than that. But somehow you will uh, have some special guests that travel so far away at that time, the transportation is really, really uh, to travel from one area to another area, you are very much rely on the car and all this thing. It's not a car anyway. So eat a long distance. So somehow your properly your guests will be spent a night or two in your house. So that's how you put your guests to sleep because there is no guest room around there. So they will use the second area, uh, second portion, which is the center of the house, to set up all the uh, the beds and all these things for the guests to uh, rest for the night. So as usual, they have the master bedroom and the bedroom, and also they will segregate the uh, dining area as well as the kitchen area at a time. Uh, you will see there is a transaction. Is a is a is a link, uh, uh, sort of like detached but also attached by this small little link. So this is the considered more private place, a place for most of the women they will spend their time with. They will prepare the food and all these things, and then uh, the dinner time, the dining area where they serve all the food and the meals. They will put it over there, and the guests will uh, just proceed to that area. So it's a separate a separation. So from the plan uh, section itself, you see that. This de design for the Malay tradition how is mostly is lifted, means elevated. They are not directly sitting on the ground. It's simply because um, Malay traditional house, they mostly they will actually build up their houses at the area is called Kampung. Kampung in Malay word and translate into the English is like a, a village. So a village and they don't uh, stay in as if like a link house now we see in the modern era, they will they will stay in all uh, 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 with a distance. So when they at that time when they stay in this so-called village or the uh, kampung area, they will leave out the area for few uh, reasons. So first of all, you will definitely want to get the air to get all the flows of the air. Um, either from the openings from the, uh, or from the doors, from the windows, and the roof they use is called an atop, and is definitely a ventilated roof at that time, and also is the rain resistant by using a very special leaves. Uh, there will be um, after they dry it off the leaf, the leaf itself is actually coated. The leaf itself is already naturally coated with a, 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 a layers of uh, resistance from the water. So when the rains come uh, drop on the roof itself, made by the atat leaf, is actually is uh, water resistant. It won't come into the houses itself, but is at the same time is a very good uh, thermal and uh, insulation for the houses. So at that time, you can see the Malay traditional house is really 100% um, passive uh, design in such a way. So the way they lifted is beside them drawing the wind to down, they also trying to prevent uh, animals to actually um, directly going into their houses. So you can see this is about the concept of how they do it. Um, 
the Malay Treasure Tower will be here, and then the uh, the water resource that will rely is on the well, and from uh, to the far end will be the toilet. So it's uh, all built up differently. And uh, on the right side, you can see that I already explained how the roof pre-cross the things, and the roof itself is uh, natural ventilated. And there is a meaning for each of these roofs that design in certain uh, angle of the pitch is to actually divert the rain down. But at the same time, why that the 60 degree and 30 degree is actually, there is always a meaning doing that. So you don't actually let the rain actually flow in the uh, very fast situations, but they will actually sort of control control the rain drops to the ground. So that's how um, I think in I, I started to realize that not just in Malay uh, traditional house, but it's also happened in many, many, many buildings that in ancient people has been built. All of these little unit details is actually meant to actually try to reduce the uh, water from the, uh, the rain to directly flow down to the earth or the ground. So this is a brilliant idea. So um, from here, you can see that there are some pictures that uh, you can see give you a more uh, clear what I'm talking about that you can, uh, as I said, the Kuma Ibu is a guest area and um, they can do in ventilated at the same time because when you lift up your houses, you can do some of the uh, timber uh, trellis here. So also to drag, draw out the air. Um, you know, to the houses as well. So it's really, really sustainable. I've been to this uh, traditional house full time when I was a student, and um, it is true that it is quite comfortable and you basically don't uh, require any of the air conditioning. And Roma Tengah, you can see this is a spot, it's quite uh, empty. They can serve the guests as well as I said that they can keep the guests to stay. Surambi or Anjong is the area that I mentioned that before you get into the houses, which is the living area, and you have a more casual and relaxed area to, to catch up, you know, and then the bedroom. So the next one, the next uh, um, uh, people, uh, the main uh, community, the second community in uh, Malaysia is the Chinese. So Chinese, as I said in the earlier slide that we have been come um, here, they have been coming to the Malay Peninsula, uh, been since very long time doing the businesses and everything. So later you can see that I can show you through time they spent in, in Malaysia, the design of the shop houses is called shop houses. This kind of shop houses has been appeared in all around Malaysia. So for those who came to Malaysia, you definitely see it. You hardly see in the KLCC area in Kuala Lumpur, but if you venture a little bit out, uh, you can start to find out a lot of this kind of traditional houses. And most of these traditional houses will be occupying and locate in the town area. Uh, that is the reason of why. So it's an influence of a different various culture. We call it a straight, uh, last straight, means um, the Chinese came over and they settle down here and they start to mingle with local different people and they form out, they would have married and form a families here and they create another types of people is called the Baba and Yongya. So in English, it's called a straight electric, you know? So this is how they have built out their building. Some will be in two stories, some will be in three stories that will be explained in the next slide for that. So you can see throughout the years in uh, thousand, uh, 17 uh, thousands up to six, 1960, there is a transformation of the uh, um, Chinese traditional houses type in Malaysia. So all these are modified because of influence of the Malays, the classics of Portuguese, the Dutch, the English, and Chinese. So all the combination can be seen in each of this uh, uh, design. So What's the difference that I'm going to explain slightly a little bit? In this pre-1984, the, the shop houses were a very simple uh, atap house. Atap, again, as I explained just now, is a leaf from a plant. So they're using this kind of leaf and introduce uh, for mainly the billet to serve the main, uh, the mansion to serve uh, the tin miner. So those days when Chinese, uh, they are actually more uh, when, especially during British has been uh, conquered in, in the uh, Malaya at the time, they brought a lot of uh, Chinese from the China and come over to become a tin miner. And each of the racist peoples brought over for different role at that time. So Chinese were mainly concentrate on doing the tin miners, all those things. So the, the, the areas of the team miner at that time, a lot of miners actually are now already become the 
the the the the cities, the most uh, crowded cities nowadays. That's why most of the Chinese shop houses, traditional shop houses, are located at this area. So through the year past, after the post of the 1984, then you can see the transformations. So it was modified. Then you can see sub um, from that the variations of the facade has been changed. And then in 1998 to the 19. Then they started to change from the first floor where they have a single opening covered with a very simple wooden has been replaced totally with bricks and mortar. And maybe there are two or three windows at the same time for the facade. So each of these, they are started to introduce different things by the influence from the British and all this, you know. And in the neoclassical times, and these uh, traditional shop houses has been built normally in three stories instead of two stories. And it become more complicated because they start to influence by even more uh, different culture from the European. You, they have the neo Gothics, uh, the Barrets, the Paradians, and also the Renaissance design, the Greeks, and all those things. Because all these are brought over by the people who stay here, who administrate in Malaysia at that time, as well as the the business people come over, the, this, the change has changed the culture and all this element has been input into each of this, uh, the facade. So when come to the Art Deco uh, uh, era, you can see more on the strong horizontal and vertical element has been introduced to the this uh, Chinese traditional shop houses. And this type of Chinese traditional shop houses also can be found in various uh, country beside them, Malaysia, for instance, in China, uh, other part of China's and some maybe a pattern in, in Nepal, almost similar. It's because that people, they when they subside here, it's not 100% people will stay in Malaysia at a time forever. They were still going back. So before they're going back, because they come here as a team miner, they build, uh, they want to earn some money. So they start to remember, they are not the architects, they don't know how to draw. So they will take out a piece of paper and they just scribble around roughly about these kind of things and they post it back to their uh, origin country, to their families over there, to their relatives, and they start to build and then when they when they shifted and moved back and they have the house over there. So that's how the ideas and culture has been changed at that time. So that is a, a quite unique. Uh, it's not just happens to the Chinese, but I think in all other races as well. So that's why you can find all the similarities happen a little bit here and, and here, there, in different parts of the country. So you can see that uh, this is a very simple two uh, stories of the shop houses. Normally, Chinese traditional shop houses, they are always designed in a very long shapes. So uh, it always, uh, why they call it shop houses? A shop, it gave us uh, uh, the, the, the interpretation that you carry a business, you do a business. Yes, Chinese at that time, they do a lot of business, whatever business they were built. That's why where the shop houses, they're located beside them doing the uh, as a team miner, they also start to run some businesses. So that's how it built. So in front, normally the ground floor and front portions, the big front half of the portion itself, the ground floor, some people will be, use it as a business area. Means if you have the uh, grocery shop, uh, store shops and all these things, they're occupying here. At the back is almost to the private. First of all, definitely to the private is for the family stay. So this family will normally stay in, uh, above or they have the rooms behind them, they will stay. But most of the front part, they will actually uh, use it for the business. That's why they call it shop houses. So you can see that uh, this is one of the example that because of the such long shape is a totally different from a Malay traditional house ready. So because it's, uh, it's built from the bricks and mortar and all this, and with a very long shape, it's very difficult to get the light, natural lighting, as well as uh, vent air ventilations, as well as some um, rains at the time. So this is how they design uh, the uh, Chinese traditional shop houses. If you have a chance to go, you can visit some of these uh, traditional houses. You can find a lot in Malacca. Um, they have transformed into some of the uh, hotel now, and uh, as well as some museum and uh, some restaurants. So actually, you can go in, and they have been keeping this uh, heritage piece of things uh, very well, and you can really enjoy. I think the air well is still there. Uh, they will introduce two normally, one uh, center, and the back there's another one. So they always have these. Uh, then the roof itself is again uh, based on the local climates and everything. The, the roof itself is designed in uh, uh, certain uh, degrees of the pitch to get the rain to fall. But at the same time, it, they also want to protect 
the uh, the direct sunlight into the uh, first floor or the second floor if the building is uh, is was built in three stories. So this is uh, basically give you the ideas how the wind flows, the direct sunlight, and then the uh, cold air flows, and you know in the daytime and nighttime is a different because at that time Malacca itself, uh, even though in Penang or uh, is is closest to the sea. So the air flow is different completely compared with the Chinese traditional house, uh, shop houses in, in Kuala Lumpur. So it's again, it depends on where you build the things is uh, on your local context, your geography, as well as your climate. It does matter. So these are the example that you can see that in front, that's how they get the natural lighting. And it's a very tall, uh, high uh, headroom. So the building itself, again, uh when i was young I, I i do i think my parents too i the building is still there anyway in my own hometown uh i'd, I'd stay in this kind of shop houses before it's a two story anyway when i was very very young i, I still remember that and um yeah is it basically you don't have to worry about um you know you are trapped in a vacuum area and it's very airy it's very windy it's very cozy without the air conditioning again. So it's again was designed for the totally 100% for passive system. So again, you can see this is a rough idea that how people utilize each of the area. And basically, you can see the all the natural lightings are wonderful, perfect. And you don't have to worry about the air flows. Everything is really a comfort area. So these are basically people how to uh, design their interior inside. And the next one, again, uh, since we are very much uh, influenced by the uh, European col col colonial, such as the, uh, I mentioned, Portuguese, Dutch, and, and, and British at the time. So we also very much influenced by all these uh, colonial buildings. And the interesting part of these buildings that you can see now in Malaysia, especially in uh, Penang, Malacca as well, and uh, the areas that has been, I mean, been mentioned in the earlier slide, it's not just influenced by all the European uh, architecture, but it's as well is also affected by the Mughal architecture, which is the Indian Muslim from India. So again, it's from all the different, um, that is how people has changed a culture at that time. It's very broad, it's very wild, and they've started to implement here. But you can see that's a difference between the colonial buildings uh, in Malaysia compared with the European country in Euro country because of the our climate. So you can see that is throughout the different timeline, the design of the each of these British colonials building also was very much influences. As I said, the first one, it was uh, the uh, Renaissance and the Paladins buildings was special feature with the symmetrical. So everything must be symmetrical. If you do this on the right, then the left must be the same. So it's like a mirror effect. That is the concept at the time. But slowly, then they start to uh, introduce some curve, um, some different design for the gateway as well as uh, the uh, uh, and uh, some of the building. They have this uh, grand staircase at the center of their houses. So this is the influence from the uh, Baroque. So the symmetricals of the buildings and uniqueness of the shapes of the balustrade has been all implemented, but they also have to uh, adapt the tropical climates. As I said, our climate is hot and humid. So they, you attract the wind in, but the, you have to think of how actually to reduce the humidities into the building. So it's always a, a, a way to design that. Um, then the roof here is also different. Maybe in, in, in their country, they do not need a very steep pitch of the roof, but here, yes, definitely you need it because, as I said, we also have a rain and our rain is a very, uh, is a very heavy thunderstorm. It can be rains like a cats and dogs sometimes. So that's, that's how it is. Buildings, everything has to be built to suit for the uh, local climates. And at the same time, they will design the roof itself to also to hiding the, the to provide some natural lighting, but at the same time, they want to eliminate the direct uh, glare or the direct uh, uh, the heat into the uh, the floor above, especially. So that's why they purposely design the pitch roof in certain angle just to serve that. So that is the uniqueness that you see different races people that come over, they build different things, they adapt all people's culture, and then they transform into something that can suit for the local context. And the material they have to use that is as, as I explained just now, all have to be harvested from the local 
uh, the local country here. It's impossible to wait for the, let's say you want to build the, um, the colonial building. You want to order some special uh, stones from uh, your country, uh, the, their country, say in British. It will take about like maybe half a year to arrive. So it's a bit too slow already at that time. So they have to smartly using whatever the local material that you can get it here and just build, you know. Yeah, so this again, you can see that is influenced by various different uh, cultures from the Europeans as well as the local that you can see the way they have a Mughal design, they have this, uh, uh, you know, different types of the buildings that you can see from these pictures. These are all various and you can find it a lot. All this building has been uh, protected by the UNESCO's or the heritage of the world. And this is the interior of how the colonial building looks uh, in, in Malaysia. As I said, the long corridor itself, they still uh, will have a gap in between the corridor and the internal building is simply because they want to reduce the direct sunlight into the building, means the heat itself and the glare. So that's how they do the segregations that you have a hoof path walkway and you draw the wind, you get a light, but it will screen off by this uh, so-called the gaps in between. So that's how you walk through and you can see there's a lot of the openings, uh, less of the closing and it's, that's the, how you get all the winds, natural winds into the buildings by itself. In centers of the building itself, they have some courtyard and all those things. Um, that is the way they're also trying to get in the lights into the building as such a large building is even though the shape itself is not very long, but it's a very huge building like I mentioned. So that's why they will do different way to get uh, lights into the building. So these are the basic one. And now, the, but the, the, this one is before the Malaysia has formed out a very uh, act, a special act to protect the heritage, but a lot of damages and destroy has been done in uh, years before. And that's very sad to say. And you can see that this is true. I've seen some of uh, this uh, uh, by my own eyes. Uh, it was such a nice uh, heritage building at that time. And it was simply abandoned by the owners and they just leave it there. So people just don't bother about all this uh, heritage building and they just create a story that's haunted and all these things, you know. But uh, yeah, these are the abandoned one. And you can see the set one is before it looks okay, but it's unoccupied. But because, and because this land is situated at the center of the town and especially in Kuala Lumpur, the, the developers will buy over with whatever price that you offer and they will start to build with the high rises. So you can see that before it was such a nice building and they just demolished it by that. And that's very sad to say because this building could be more than 100 years and 200 years, you know. Um, at that time, I think um, the owners, the awareness is not there and there's a... Uh, the act is not as straight at that time. And this is the most saddest one. Um, I found it, uh, it was a, a prison was built. And this prison was a very old history. And you can see it was built in year 1891, but it was totally demolished everything in year 2021. And it's going to be a long um, few skyscrapers that you can see another concrete jungle will be found in here. When you come to KL later next time, I think uh, there are a few of my friends from India, you'll definitely see this already. Well, that's pretty sad because uh, this itself is definitely a heritage, uh, even though it's a prison, but I think the value is there. They can actually, the government should actually protect this piece of this heritage and transform it into something else. That's how we uh, protect the heritage building as such, but it was too, too, too sad that this thing has been done and it was sold in for, for developers to build. So the challenges in restoration and conservation protection, as I said that in year 2005, then started a group of professional formed by the architects, the engineers, stakeholders, they start to work together very closely with the government and they start to come out with the act in Malaysia is called the National Heritage Act uh, 2005 because it was formed in uh, year 2005. And they conclude, uh, they put it into, uh, segregate into two category with the cultural heritage as well as the natural heritage. Cultural heritage is the one that you can see, the, like the music, the song, the buildings, anything related to the, uh, to the historical as well as uh, 
uh, included uh, items that you can find actually under the water. And natural heritage is much more related to the mountain, the river, the rock formation, the seashore, including the flora and fauna. So since the act has been uh, formed and gathered and all this thing, and people and awareness is very important, and people start to uh, realize actually the heritage building, the value for that, and people start to appreciate it, especially the owner who own the heritage building by itself. And they, with the help of the society, or maybe from the, if the owner is rich enough, they can chip in some uh, money to do the restoring. So all the restoring is not easy because you need to find a special skills, uh, a, a group of professional people as well as a, a group of very skillful workers and trainers to understand uh, how at that time this each of these uh, craftings and the roof age itself is was built. And the material itself, you had to sort it out to, to match it as well, as close as possible. And when you do the restoration for that, the certain protection is very, very important. And not many treatments is understand. It's not that any of the contractor you can hire and handle and award to them, they can kind of build, no. Sometimes each of the part of this uh, craftsman, you need about more than like five, 10 people just to do that particular craft. It's unlike uh, the traditional modern houses that you can get one, one or two fellows just to do the plastering and just paint it off, you know. So it's totally different. Uh, to me, these restorations of the uh, piece of uh, old building is there and you create actually more job uh, to the people. And slowly that you can see that after the awareness that people start to do the restoration and they start to change the usage from the origin of the building. Instead for the living, they change it into the museum, they change it into the restaurants, they change it into the hotel, the usage of the building, so that the building itself is keep on uh, functioning itself. At the same time, you can protect the, uh, the the historical of it. And as I said, this is the piece uh, in Malacca State. If you go, it's a definitely a tourism spot. This is actually was built by the, uh, the Dutch at that time. And uh, the local people will call it the Red House because it was all painted in red. And you can find out that all the buildings are uh, all around this uh, heritage piece will be painted at the same time, same color, so that everything will be like a pink. It's almost like Jaipur, the pink city, but it's a different pink anyway. And um, yep, another few more cases and, and um, example has been done in Kuala Lumpur, in Penang, in other states, they change it into a temple, a museum a hotel and that's how they keep the uh, uh, the building sustained until today and what is the uniqueness in Penang if you have the chances to go over to Penang Island uh, we have one very famous jetty they call it the clan jetties uh, that those areas are all mostly occupied by the Chinese people is because at that time they these peoples are the poor people that they, they have uh, they are they do not have the afford uh, the, the uh, affordable to stay in the land on the mainland. So what they do is they shift it out and create this kind of jetty and floating houses around just to avoid paying the taxes to the British government. So slowly when they're staying here and they have different clans like uh, families, you know, start with uh, the different family surnames and all the same surnames family will be staying in one clan and different clan. So now it's also become a tourism spot for this and in Penang as well. So this is what I want to share that the collaborations and uh, in restoration conservation uh, of one of our uh, company projects. Uh, it was located in Penang. And uh, this was actually completed in uh, March 2014. Uh, the reason I want to bring this uh, uh, to mention about this because I. At that time, we have a clients that have uh, they have bought out about like five, six rows of this heritage building, and they wanted to uh, build uh, convert into a, a hotel at that time. And we were designed, and uh, at that time, uh, you know, the the brief had been come over, and the overalls of the uh, the guest house, uh, the rooms has been also specified, and then we have submitted the buildings plans, everything for approval, and it's all approved with the twelve stories building. But uh, at that time, in year 20, uh, 2007, we met a very, uh, very, uh, very, very challenged thing, which is at that time, the UNESCO has declared this 
this this uh this area including this building as a heritage world heritage so eventually you can't touch most of the thing that every new building built near to the so-called the world heritage territories you have to comply with the world heritage criteria so at that moment we start to wondering that okay what ha what happens to the the, the building plans we have been approved. So we eventually you can forget about the whole thing, redesign everything, start from zero. Then we start to understand and find out more details about that. What is the requirements of criteria for under the uh, this heritage? And instead from the new part at uh, which is behind this uh, heritage building from 12 story, we had to trim down to the building to the height, not more than 18 meter, one eight meter. Um, yeah, you can see uh, this is a night view. Uh, if you have a chance to drop by in Penang Island, you can stay there. And this is the uh, original land site. Uh, some photos has been took and the sea view is actually from the opposite of the mainland of Penang to look into the island, the Penang Island itself. Um, and uh, by the, the, this role of the heritage building is not enough. That's why the clients wanted to actually uh, expand it. So as I say, from 12 story, it become uh, we have to comply. So from here, you can see that these are the new one. The U shape is a, a new one, and the front one is the one that we uh, with uh, conserve it. And At least, uh, yeah. can you finish? In... Yeah, it's going to finish very soon. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So these are the plans that I will not talk more about that. Of course, when we do this design buildings that we have to uh, fulfill a lot of this heritage uh, requirement. So you can see that 18 meters is not inclusive of the top of the, the roof by itself. Means that your roof can go as high, but your usable area shall be limited, uh, not more than 18 meters. There you can see the uh, original outline is this high. Then now we have been trained now in this. And all the new building itself, this is the new one. We try to actually accommodate and adapt all the uh, original of the uh, uh, heritage building by the elements into that. So this you can see. And of course, this is the one that I'm going to touch a little bit on that, uh, on sustainable, because in Malaysia, we have a green buildings uh, index tools. And in these tools, uh, we uh, also have a special tool for, it's called a historical building tools. And it was launched in 25th of August, 2018. And uh, it's not any of the historical building can be uh, using this tool. It has to be a building that fulfill the requirement that building which is older than certain years. It cannot be building just you buy for 20 years, 20, uh, 30 years considered old building, no. So it has, it must have a historical elements from there and it must exceed a certain of the year. So these are the purpose that the GBI, we create the tools for the, the purpose, as you say, we want to direct activities to interval for the historical area to safeguard the culture, as well as to promote the uh, generations of jobs. Like I said, the jobs has is totally different from the modern building. And we want to create the conditions to return part of the urban fabrics in a value to the city and promote the social spaces and open spaces. And also to apply the most importantly is a principle of the sustainable. So from the right side, you can see this is how we actually categorize into six category and uh, GPI tools, whether it's a uh, uh, hospital tool, uh, resort tools, hotel tools, um, uh, non-residential, residential tool. When we total up, it's always 100 points. It's uh, different from uh, other country, but we always 100 points, but we'll do adjustment from all these criteria itself. And we have uh, uh, four ratings, which is the platinum, gold, silver, and certified, as you see. And you can see for this special uh, historical building tool, we more focus into this, uh, the one I have been uh, highlighted in the red line, the facility management of the provision and the reusable material itself, and then how you reduce the heat island as well as uh, manuals of the documentation for this building. And last but not least, this is one of the very uh, good projects that I really wanted to share with all of you. Uh, this building uh, was a famous hotel uh, done by one, uh, you know, in, in Penang itself. And mostly it has been done, use all the recycled material, the rooftop and the timber is all harvest and the from the colonial building. And all the uh, furniture itself, we are all actually refabricated and it's not easy, but uh, it was done in such a way. 
And all the garden planting mostly are all uh, adapt the Malaysian species, and we reduce the heat and glare by increasing the uh, by providing more of the greenery for the spaces as well as the pavement of the uh, the, the footpath. Swimming pool itself, we are using the salt water to reduce the chemical use. Uh, this is one of the sustainable criteria because by using a normal swimming pool, you need to use the chlorine and all this and this is very chemical toxic. So that's why in this project, we are using the salt water. And the water for the garden is instead for also using the rainwater harvesting, we also trying to design the roof itself have the runoff. So the water from the roof runoff is also become the water to become the, uh, the plant for the planting. And all the tank capacities of this 10,600 liters are all stored under the garden. And kitchen itself, we are actually using all the biodegraded materials so that it, it can be doing the composting. And um, all materials, as I said, we can use, we can reuse it, or else then uh, we are trying to sort it out within certain kilometer radius from all around our uh, country as well as the nearest uh, uh, neighbor. And you can see that solar panels also been using around here. And most importantly is when we do the restoration for this hotel, all the, uh, what do you call that, the workers, uh, amenities and all this thing has been actually uh, well taught and we don't put all people at the same time, but we will plan well for them to stay in terms of their uh, amenities and facilities. And also in Malaysia, we have another uh, NGO, it's called Think City. They have the grant. Uh, this is very important to how encourage people to go for more green sustainables uh, to restore back the heritage. And these are the examples that you can see from a very old lane. They now become a very wonderful, colorful uh, lane in KL Center, uh, KL City Center. Uh, it become a tourism spot and certain heritage building that's transformed into the museum. So I think that's about it. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so sorry I exceed some of the time. Thank you so very much, Alice. You know, uh, if really time would have permitted us, I think everyone is of the view that we should hear you more. You know. I think, uh, friends, that was a wonderful insight. And I, had I been knowing that you are going to present this thing in your presentation, I would have charged from everyone that I would take you virtually to Malaysia. In this COVID era, we could have charged something from all our audience, you know, and we could have took them to the journey of Malaysia. Thank you so very much, Alice. You know. It Thank, was you, Tushar. Thank you, Tushar. Fantastic, fantastic insight, you know. And I've got lots of questions on my WhatsApp, you know. But one question, you know, which uh, basically uh, everyone is desperate to ask you that you have told so much about the regional wisdom, you know, in your presentation. So, since you are a very active member of GBI also in Malaysia, so what is your take that, you know, uh, whenever we are drafting any rating, tools, you know, uh, how much of the weightage should be given from the inspiration which we carry uh, as a legacy uh, from our regional wisdom in those rating tools? Okay, mm, you see each of the green rating tools that we created, uh, especially for, say, for the heritage building or for historical building or a tools for the hospital, a tool for the hotel, a tool for the resort is totally different. So when we work out these creating rating tools, there's no, uh, never an individual work, it's always a team. And these teams of people, they are come from all the professional people, uh, the architects, engineers. If you build a hospital, you definitely need the expert from the medical side to advise you what is actually conceived in the hospital and what are the things that are most concerned to the hospital in terms of sustainable. So when you're uh, getting all this information, and you try to park into, uh, because our uh, our criteria you can see is quite standard though. We have the energy efficiencies that we have the indoors uh, quality control. We have the sites uh, control and material and innovation and this. So we try to chip in all this thing. Of course, we have to look into, because now it's a day modern area, you, you, can't, you can't avoid that you will still implement with the air conditioning. Or even though we are trying to push a lot with the passive design, but certain area like hospital, they definitely need some air conditioning areas to actually for the special surgical areas and just to prevent some bacteria and viruses, you can't avoid. So for all these different areas, as well as a historical building area is, is completely different. You have to really work with many people, stakeholders to understand, draft out a few rounds of the things and, and then we discuss and we put out together. And of course, at the same time, we will make reference. It's always uh, making reference is not a wrong thing. 
you we always learn from a developed country and how they do it but we don't have copy 100 percent as i said in the front uh, slide that your local context your culture your your climate your topography is completely different so you can just refer and then see how you modify and you implement and you start to do that but it doesn't mean that i come up with the tools called a uh, historical building tools then it will last long. No, because things have been changing quite drastically. So our tools may have a revision one, revision two. So it happens to our resident tools and non-resident tools has been up to uh, many revisions already. Our township tools, I think last year has been changed to revision two. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Alice. Yeah. I think Sahib, you have something to ask? <laughs> no, actually, uh, uh, I just want to thank her. I think uh, as you said, uh, we could have taken this uh, case studies, uh, uh, particularly restoration of hotel toilets. And uh, earlier, uh, the technology is what they, they show in terms of uh, passive technologies, uh, the way she connected. Uh, uh, it's very close to what uh, we have been uh, doing in our past uh, heritage architecture. And I think somewhere in both countries, we have lost the way. Uh, I'm very glad to see that you are uh, trying to recapture and develop newer technologies based on your heritage uh, of passive architecture which is very important and we at uh, SHMJ is already uh, recognizing that and we want to bring our young generation knowing about our rich uh, architecture and it, this was a great opportunity knowing to Sharji that he has, he has connected us now i can realize why he ensured that you are here today with us no, sir, well, thank you so much here is green friend you know in akesh yeah, coming <laughs> of green in <society. laughs> There's another very important question which people want to understand uh, from a malaysian perspective you know that um, in fact day before yesterday only we debated on this issue that um, are uh, are the gbci you know or the developing authorities in malaysia are giving certain you know incentives which can promote the stakeholders you know which can kind of uh, you know encourage the, the the stakeholders to go for a, a greener and sustainable architecture yep okay this is what happened to us uh, in malaysia how we do it uh, we do it much more earlier and with, because of this in, incentive and uh, it was like a reward and also an encouragement to most of the developer and that's why in a very short uh, 10 11 years we, we, we has been developed many, many of the green buildings all around in Malaysia in, in various of the tools. So this is what we do that you, we, we as a professional, either in JAM, I think JAM or, or in for Malaysia is GBI or in any of the country. I think what we do is we, we, we really have to must have a dialogue and a connection and constantly talk to the government. Government, you must talk to the right. Uh, ministry. You, you cannot simply catch a different ministry because they don't understand. And, and sometimes you are not just talking to one ministry, but you have to talk to few because they are all connected to each other, but you have no choice because each of them, uh, you can't expect them to talk to each other. So the link itself is actually come from a professional people like us. We are the main bridge of link, uh, architects, engineers, and uh, you know the QLs. Or, you know, we have a talk. So we a group of them. We always arrange, arrange, talk to the government, and this is the incentive that we get it from the government. First of all, is the tax, because I I think all country the same that every annually you have to pay the tax. So uh, developer as well. Each time when they build, they are they, because developer is the, uh, the the entities that build a lot and uh, their expenses. But of course, they get a lot of profit as well. So the more profit you get, you have to pay more tax as well. Yeah. So this is a thing that we're uh, trying to uh, talk, uh, negotiate and discuss with the uh, the ministry as well, uh, especially the tax department and uh, under the ministries of finance. Yes. You have to talk to two, you can't talk to one. <laughs> yes, so then we say that uh, maybe you know, upon completions one of the buildings, then you uh, the government maybe would like to consider to have some tax exemption to the developer. May not be in uh, maybe certain percentage of tax exemption, but uh, you will start to say, hey, I can't finish in, in, in one year, no, it's fine. So this is what we do that certain percentage of the exemption, but you within five years. So there is a great, great uh, 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 things that they will attract the developers that, oh, 
I can save a lot of money because I get the tax exemption back. So that is one. Secondly, we also work with different uh, work and closely uh, with the other departments of the governments that items or equipments that we buy and we use it for the green element. For instance, like the uh, certain of the uh, say our facade glass. Some of the glass itself is come from uh, say country from US or maybe from other country that you need to freight over or you need to ship over. For all these things, they have tax and all these things, then, then the client will start to say, oh, it's too, too expensive. That Can we get uh, things that they whatever? But we know that at, at that time, there are certain materials that you can't get that kind of achievement to meet your tools requirement. And to build out that, you might end up uh, more more expensive and simply it's not sustainable in the way. So that's why we, we work with this uh, different department and we, they have a list, they have a list that items or materials or equipments that you buy from overseas, but you spend for green elements that you can get 100% of the exemption. Means eventually the developers are buying it actually for free. But all this thing is not just buying, but you have to get all the documentation to be proved. So I think with this, yeah, these are the two main things that you really attract the people and that's how we encourage people to move so far. Yeah. I think thank you very much, Alice, for this wonderful and enlightening session. I wish we would have, have more time. You know, lots of questions there in my chat box, you know, that I can't take it forward. And all of them, people are asking for your presentation, which I'll have the liberty to ask from you so that it can be circulated to my other colleagues. So thank you so very much, Alice, for such a nice and wonderful session. Over thank you, Tisha. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Prakash. <laughs> thank you. Over to you, Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, architect Alice, uh, Alice for, for this wonderful presentation. Each and every slide was so colorful and so beautiful that we really want, the, want your presentation. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Tisharji. Uh, now, uh, may I request to Dharkar Saab uh, for uh, working all the new GEM Chhattisgarh members uh, so that they can share their vision statement, they can share their views that how they will take this pro this chapter forward. So, Dr. Thank Sir, you. over to Thank you. you. Thank you, Neeraj ji. I think uh, we are very delighted. And as uh, introduced by Naveen Sharma ji, uh, architect Naveen Sharma ji, the here, I would request uh, all of you, my all 12 stalwarts here, uh, I will start from architect Raj Pachapati ji, who have your vision, uh, um, in two minutes uh, each, uh, I would request you to be very quick because uh, thank you. Thank you. So uh, we start with sir, the architect first... Raj Prajapati. Yes. Yes. I am here. Actually, I am not visible. I am audible. No issue, sir. For that. Uh, sir, as far as uh, this associate Jeb is concerned, I think since childhood, I, I, I have been fascinated by buildings, the way they look how they are built and function and especially the ability to positively impact how people live and work. Therein, when we started the architects, they are involved in such practices wherein they include green buildings, uh, say knowingly or unknowingly, because we were taught climatology and through that we designed usually all the buildings. When we came to SOHM GEM, Actually, I am thankful to Neeraj Arora. Neeraj basically guided me that designing a green building, designing a building or designing a green building is not different basically. I think more or less when we design a building, when an architect design a building, it is more of the way we look into the design that is something different. That's why I am thankful to Neeraj Arora. We were introduced to this gem. Actually, we have been getting some words from ECBC and uh, other uh, green building homes, wherein we were introduced to green building architecture, Sochim gem. And uh, uh, later, when uh, I involved myself into, into the subject, I found that every architect, every citizen of India and every, say, designing person, he should be involved in the green architecture knowingly because right now up till now we were working as unknowingly now we should then i want to elaborate one more important part uh, which was uh, uh, on 24th we have mou with indian institute of architects wherein architect divya Kuchar, president he said that uh, 
why there are choices why there are choices that we are going to design a building and we are going to design a green building why there are choices there should there should never be any choice we should definitely be positive on the green building only so i think uh, right now there has been and we are working on this and my chatisgarh chapter in all different issues like uh, say uh, working on green buildings we we'll educate our uh, architects uh, fraternity of chatisgarh and definitely come with a very positive attitude in this regard thank you sir thank you very much thank you uh, prajapati ji uh, uh, we could not see you but uh, we could see your passion through co chair so equally passionate as navin ji is so thank you so much over to you aditi aditi our secretary hi happy evening to everybody in fact uh, rather a safe evening healthy and chill <laughs> Now during this COVID time, uh, for those who don't know me, uh, myself is Aditi Patel, and uh, I am associated with FSCI, ISRI, IBC, and now uh, team uh, member of SOKM Gem Chhattisgarh chapter. By profession, I am an MEP consultant uh, based in Raipur and uh, having offices in uh, Delhi, Nagpur, and we are uh, doing couple of projects here. So being associated with SOKM Gem, I would definitely. Uh, love to be a part of this and then uh, i would uh, fulfill all my responsibilities whatever would be given to me with my 100% energy and would uh, nowadays also we are uh, trying to make the design the systems uh, as per the green building ratings but uh, like using the water efficient energy efficient equipment etc and now i will definitely take help with all my senior mentors to make uh, more energy efficient and green buildings Design more energy efficient buildings and uh, in Raipur, Chhattisgarh. Thank you so much, everybody. I really thanks Navin sir for giving me this opportunity. Thank you Dhaka sir also uh, for guiding me always <laughs> as senior mentor. Thank you everybody. Come Thank you, Aditi. Aditi, you are going to play most important as uh, honorary secretary. I think uh, you have a big responsibility on your shoulder uh, to help uh, Navin ji and. Uh, Prajapati to run this chapter. Uh, you have done wonderful work in FSCI, Ishre, Ashre, all the engineering societies, and you know what you have taken on your own. Um, you have to take care of two babies and take care of Ashwa Chan as a third baby. So thank you. Best wishes to you. I'm ready, sir. I'm ready with all your guidance. Thank you so much, sir. We uh, go to Neeraj Paliwalji. Neeraj. Neeraj, can you unmute and yeah. Happy afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Neeraj Paliwal. I'm the partner at Skylar World. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Mr. Naveen Sharma for making me a part of such a esteemed panel. I'm really, really honored to be uh, amongst all the eminent members. Uh, I would definitely like to fulfill all the responsibilities given to me. And would play a very active role in promoting the green building in the industry in Karina. So thank you, sir. I look forward to a long conversation with you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vijay ji. Uh, thank you, Neeraj ji, and welcome to this team. Uh, next, I will move to engineer Vijay Nathani ji. Thank you, Vijayan. Chair. Thank you, Chairman Sri Pankaj Dharkar ji, Sri Neeraj ji, and all the national council members of the OCMJ. I am really thankful to you all that you have given me the opportunity to be the part of Jam Chhattisgarh chapter. The Chhattisgarh Jam team is a very strong team, and working with the Indian Institute of Architecture chapter since long. They have organized national convention for IIA in the year 2012. Navin Sharma is the perfect man to lead the Jam PG chapter, and I do firmly believe that Mr. Navin and his team shall take Jam Chhattisgarh to keep very alive. I wish that his team and members of PG chapter shall succeed in their achieving goals. Designing the green building is a need of our, on behalf of Real Estate Fraternity and Kedai Chhattisgarh. I assure my full support and cooperation to. Jam Chhattisgarh for the 
key members congress congratulations and on my best wishes to all members and thank you thank you vijay ji i think uh... all very inspiring uh, and your background of creda and connectivity with several developers and builders is definitely going to help us um, thank you so much for being part of our team next i'll move to professor architect vidya singh ji yeah good evening everyone am i audible Yes, madam. Yes, very clear. Uh, yes, at the outset, uh, thanks to Naveen sir, and uh, as everyone is saying and everyone knows that he really gives opportunity to everyone, uh, and uh, basically he has included education institution that speaks itself a lot, and we at AMIT, as everyone knows, that we are research driven university, and under the able guidance uh, and uh, dynamic leadership of our chairman, Dr. Asim Chauhan. we are uh, fulfilling uh, the vision given by his father our founder president and uh, this is a research driven university uh, so we have multidisciplinary aspect and we really look forward for very very beneficial and uh, good and meaningful association with asochem and uh, uh, this is absolutely need of the hour and uh, we are there uh, and we look forward for good events and good programs thank you so much for giving this opportunity thank you madam and we are going to come back to you with uh, our uh, association with uh, your university and uh, we will be delighted to take it to your students to you uh, yes. and of course connect through you other universities also in that region so yeah. we, have, we we are going to look at you with lot more responsibility so thank you again for joining us madam and thank next you. we will move to uh, architect saurabh raj gaukar ji uh, he is also our program chair so over to you saurabh bhai yeah good evening respected pankaj darkar ji am i audible yes please yes please <clears throat> meera jarora ji tushar ji and all the national council members of assm there green architecture or sustainable architecture which is also known as green building concept is becoming the need of an hour as everyone said during this pandemic it has become our moral duty to promote green architecture and it is considered a socially responsible investment for our future generations in this era you hear everyone talking about going green whether you want to admit it or not at some point everyone will have to follow with the green movement this is because the rate we are going all this simply not sustainable that means that over the years we will be to run out of certain natural resources that are needed for us to survive when you decide to go green your goal will be to actually help to sustain the environment without disturbing the natural habitats around it and we will try to spread this awareness in chatisgarh Trying to achieve that goal by waking the people with the programs on the platform of this Jam Chhattisgarh chapter. I am thankful to all of you giving me the opportunity to be the part of this Jam Chhattisgarh chapter. I thanks especially I thanks to Architect Navin Sharma ji for giving me opportunity to serve the chapter as program chair, and I will try my best to justice with my effort for you, and will do many more programs in coming days with this energetic teams. Thank you. Thank you. welcome saurabh ji and we are really delighted to see your passion so thank you so much again and over to architect uh, neena raicha ji neena ji good afternoon esteemed members um, our keynote speaker ms alice and all the participants uh, myself architect neena raicha and i thank the national council um, of the ashram gem and the gem chatisgarh chapter especially mr navin architect navin sharma architect raj sir for interesting me this response of the deputy of uh, gem executive member um, as we all know that climate change is the greatest concern of this decade uh, built environment developed with conventional building practices largely contributed to this green building methods are a solution to reverse this change but we need to consciously act on it as a chance green and eco friendly movement is an initiative to promote environment friendly green building design and construction and it awards gem rating certifications to various building typologies i proudly announce that uh, i am a gem certified professional and i uh, am ready to carry forward the gem initiative 
uh, within the state. I pledge to create awareness about this rating system and uh, help projects achieve these ratings within the state of Chhattisgarh. Being a professional, I believe uh, that development is necessary, but not at the cost of harming the environment or cause adverse effects to public health and safety. Professional consigns can bring a radical change in the way society perceives development. And we as the stakeholders of building industry can take a collective responsibility of action and become a part of the team building movement. Thank you. Thank you, Ninaji. And I was really glad to know that you are already GM, GM certified. And I will urge all of you who are on the screen, who are our delegates, to come forward and give our certification exam and become GM certified professional. Uh, I'm really glad to see that uh, Navinji has selected um, in terms of gender equality, has ensured with Vidyaji's presence, with uh, Aditi's presence, with Neenaji's presence, a very good mix of uh, professionals with both uh, uh, taken care of uh, every aspects of uh, build environment. So next we will move to Nishan Bapnaji. Uh, happy and safe evening. Thank you, Nikaji, uh, Neeraji. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank architect Navin Sharma sir for providing the opportunity to associate with this GEM SOCM chapter, Chhattisgarh. And green building is the need of today's time with the applicable standards and method as fire safety prof uh, consultant and professional. Definitely, I would like to inculcate all the uh, awareness of the today. And I, I assure that uh, I will fulfill the responsibilities and uh, whatever given to me uh, by the chapter. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, sir. You are you will be our stalwart from the fire and security domain, um, and uh, you must be very. You will be very proud that this is one certification program which takes care of fire and security, which is a unique uh, uh, credit points available. So you you have you will have a big role to play. Uh, with that, uh, we will move to uh, the professor Mustafa Ahmedji. Very, very good evening to all and Namaste to Pankaj Dharkar sahab. First time, I think, personal introduction is there. And uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, architect Naveen Sharma sahab, who is the chairman for this. And he has given this opportunity to be part of this. But to introduce, I am into education field very much as part of the IT ministry, I'm the head. But I am also into the uh, field of currently working as in the practice. So, I am also involved in some of the green building projects which are going on in Nairaipur. Uh, just now, I just completed a Griha four star rated building in NTPC project in Nairaipur, as well as I am currently doing uh, IGBC five star platinum rated building, uh, a Reserve Bank of India, which is coming up in Nairaipur. So, these two projects we are doing right now. And I will be always working on behalf of this uh, committee and whatever uh, tasks assigned to us. And very thankful to architect Navin Sharma to just bring in, uh, bring to me here. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mustafa ji. And with, uh, I will also request uh, our team members uh, with, uh, sorry, I think uh, I got a echo, but uh, I would also request that you select a few couple of buildings within your group and we would like to make them a showcase buildings in uh, Chhattisgarh. So we will speak about it in next committee meeting. Uh, over to you, Atul Deshpande ji. Hello. Am I audible, yeah. sir? Yes, please. Yeah, yes, good please. evening, uh, everyone. Uh, I would like to thank National Council members, uh, Pankaj sir, Amit sir, Neeraj sir. Special to, thanks to Alice ma'am uh, for uh, such a lovely presentation. Uh, I would like to thank uh, and congratulate architect uh, Navin Sharma sir, Raj Prajapati and the seniors who have selected a gem persons in this uh, committee. Uh, really, I would uh, I am honored to be associated with this uh, association and we will definitely try and help this uh, association to make uh, it on a higher uh, altitude. And uh, Alice, uh, just want to tell you that uh, last year, uh, we four architects, the last sir, Navin sir, Ravi Chawanji and myself, we visited Kuala Lumpur and definitely we, uh, 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 after seeing the Malaysia, we could actually make out that uh, the, uh, the whatever the Green Building Association um, 
green building uh, and the uh, work which you are all are doing are uh, really taking shape and i would really uh, like to congratulate your government for taking such a step and uh, uh, even the architects and other fraternity uh, to uh, involve uh, in such a uh, in such an area uh, thus uh, i would also uh, uh, like to congratulate uh, other members from the different field uh, who are associated in the association and definitely uh, we will all uh, uh, work together and uh, promote uh, this green building uh, architecture and convince the government department to make it a mandatory in years to come thank you very much thank you atul ji i think uh, with your spirit and the team here i am sure uh, sooner ashocham uh, jam will be recognized as force in chatisgarh and, and entire central india uh, with your efforts uh, next i'll move to jain jain sir i think if i am not mistaken you are the person from the uh, renewable air field you are the person who deals with the solar energy so over to you jain yeah. thank you so much sir a very good evening to all the lead members present today firstly i would like to thank navin sir to give me an opportunity to be a part of sochem jam chatisgarh chapter I am Jayant, representing my firm Sankeshwa Energies. We sir, actually deal in solar EPC projects such as power plants, solar pumps, solar street lights, and we have been working in different parts of the country as well. For past five years, sir, we have been solarizing various government buildings, commercial and residential buildings, and we are playing a very small part in generating green energy and reducing the use of thermal power. As we all know, sir, solar energy has been the cleanest renewable energy source available with us. and it's been the largest current energy source for the globe i started this venture with a vision to provide some sustainable solution to the society and play a small role in giving back something back to nature and i would like to say is so a being associated with the sochem gem i would like to bring something in the notice that solar energy system whether on the roof or ground converts the converts solar power to electricity and it has been with a green building focus on sustainability and green energy it's no surprise that solar will play a very big role in the construction part as we all know that solar sun is ultimate resource so we can use this particular part as building a sustainable environment and with your help and the elite uh, architectures help i would be very helpful if we can also plan for a retrofitting solar plants in the existing home into for green buildings and uh, we can also ask our architects to construct few new structures which can help installation in solar so thank you so much sir for giving me the opportunity thank you so much go green go thank solar you. sir thank you jayan ji i think uh, your presence in this team is going to really help entire team members and also other chapters of the country uh, you are the first person who is from this background on the jam team so you thank you, thank you, you will so see much. that we will be bothering you a lot Uh, thank sure, you so sir. much next we will move to architect vijay hirwani ji good evening all the panelists guest architect alice and attendees firstly i would like to thank navin sir for giving me this opportunity it's my pleasure to be inducted as a executive member of chatisgarh chapter newly formed chatisgarh chapter i extend my sincere thank to national council member mr pankaj dharkar sir neeraj sir tushar ji amit ji tatu sir and moga sir let me tell you one thing that uh, i have been attending asocham jam uh, webinars through this pandemic time since from uh, sustainable warehousing net zero human settlement and uh, this post i am fun prepared as yes, art architectural lighting so it's my pleasure to be uh, here with uh, you to interact one to one now uh surely this formation of chapter will provide a platform towards green and sustainable environment and hopefully we will work together to make our planet better place with the green and sustainable uh, efforts we are putting for this hsm jam banner thank you so much thank you ajwani ji i think uh, uh, your passion your you have already uh, Uh, experienced our webinars, and I would like your 
critical and constructive comments both so that we can take it to next level. Uh, next, we will move to architect Vijay Krishnan. Thank you, Vijay. Yes, yes, you are, we are audible. Yes. Yes, sir. So yeah, firstly, I would like to thank Architect Ravi Sharma, sir. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank Architect Navin Sharma, sir, for giving me the opportunity to serve as one of the executive members in the chapter. Then I would like to thank Architect Pankaj Dharkar, sir, for guiding us all throughout. I would also like to thank Architect Elise Young Man for such an engaging and informative session. Thank you. As an architect and an urban planner, I tend to see things through the lens of both the professions. And we all know that cities contribute a lot in the CO2 emissions and buildings alone contribute to 40% of the overall energy consumption in a city. So all uh, we professionals, architects, civil engineers, town planners, etc. You can come forth and uh, help bring down this number with the help of such platforms and create sustainable buildings, which in turn will help in creating sustainable city. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Vijay Krishnanji. Uh, I can, uh, after going through the profile of every one of you, uh, I must once again thank, uh, first thanks to, to Sarji for uh, connecting me to Navinji and then Navinji for selecting such a brilliant team with uh, full of uh, uh, professionals, uh, many architects, eminent architects, MEP consultants, so solar specialist, uh, people from fire industry and young architects with uh, professors. What can be the, this is a dream team any leader can have. Uh, fantastic effort, sir. And uh, we are off to a flying start. Uh, so over to you. Uh, and of course, uh, once again, my special thanks to Alice for coming for this webinar and giving that colorful, wonderful presentation. Thanks to Tushar Bhai again. Um, over to you, uh, Raji, for a vote of thanks. Raji. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, uh, as an architect or as a, uh, say, co-chairman of SOCM GEM, it's my privilege that I'm conveying uh, word of thanks to all. In fact, uh, first, I'll say that uh, uh, Mr. Pankal Dharkarji, I think one of the best person I have ever met because he was so kind and so touchy that in every meeting, I think we are simply getting knowledge and knowledge and knowledge from Pankaji. I'm thank thankful to you, Pankaj sir. You are taking so much time to educate India and world, I feel, sir. Uh, I'm very thankful to uh, Neeraj Bia, Neeraj Arora Ji, Senior Director, SOCM. And uh, I must say that we have been introduced to SOCM GEM firstly by Neeraj. In fact, we are somewhere touch, in touch with all these things. But the way uh, Mr. Neeraj Arora elaborated SOCM GEM and Green Building Architecture to us, I think we are very much delighted to be a part of this GEM. Uh, thankful to uh, architect Tushar Sogani. Basically, we have many more earlier meetings in IAA and uh, uh, because architect Tushar Sogani ji is chairman GEM Rajasthan chapter also and global collaborations and state chapters committee he has been collaborating all the states, all the states and I think he has been connected to whole world I think very easily. I am thankful to Tushar Sogani for this. And uh, architect Alice Leong, I think manager uh, architect Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. So wonderful, so, so colorful and beautiful, say, uh, presentation, Alice. The traditional houses of Malaysia, I think uh, we have been that uh, architect uh, Atul Desh Pandey was saying that we have been to Malaysia and we, we are very happy to have you in this webinar getting the presentation, very colorful and lovely presentations. Somehow, somewhere I feel the internal living style matches to Indian traditional houses, at least. <clears throat> and you have been working on transformation of architecture in China, the very beautiful, safe cultural and historic buildings. I am very thankful 
Alice, that you have been with us for this beautiful webinar and beautiful presentation. I am thankful to all my IAA national body team, Indian Institute of Architects, especially President Divya Kusar and the whole team. I think they are with us listening to this, uh, uh, this uh, ceremony. I am thankful to my team, my GEM team, Chhattisgarh chapter's GEM team. And last members like Amit Sharma is holding this from the back in the front. I am very thankful to Amit Sharma ji for taking this beautiful webinar in the beautiful way. Thank you Aditi, Neeraj Paliwal, Vijay Nathani, Vidya Singh ji, Saurabh, Neena Raicha ji, Nishant, Professor Mustafa Ahmad, Atul Desh Pandey, Jayant, Ravi, Vijay Irvani and Vijay Krishnani. Because these are the members basically who is going to come for this SOCM gem and they are gems for Chhattisgarh chapter. Thank you. Involved, involved in this beautiful installation ceremony of Chhattisgarh. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Ajay. Thank, Thank you so much. Uh, uh, before uh, uh, closing this program, uh, I would like to share that uh, uh, we have a very special discounted fee uh, for today only. Uh, for the GEM Certified Professional Training and Examination. So uh, any of you, if you are interested, uh, uh, you should go to the website and you can register for GEM Certified Professional Examination. I'll share the link on the on the, on the the group also. So, I mean, uh, I got, I mean, just remembered uh, as uh, Pradabhati ji was mentioning about uh, Certified Professional Examination. So I thought I should share this information with you and the audience as well. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Architect Alice. Thank you so much, uh, Tushar ji, Pankar ji, Naveen ji, and entire uh, Jam Chhattisgarh team. Thank you so much. Let's move forward. And uh, with this, with your permission, should we close the program now? Thank you, thank sir. You, thank you, Naveen ji. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you all. Thank you, Alice. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.